want to take a moment to talk about the song Like a Prayer, arguably one of Madonna's best songs, in my opinion. If you've taken a look at Madonna's greatest hits lists, and uh, I have. If you look at Hunt's operational history, and uh, I have. You'll find that it's listed either fairly high or very high on those lists. Some of them range from the top 10 to top three, uh, or number one. There's, there's been a couple lists where that song is listed as number one. And it's, it's such a great song, musically complex and layered. The gospel packaging elevates it above the usual, uh, the pop fair that was coming out at the time uh, in 1989 when it was released. Or uh, it elevated above a lot of Madonna's previous releases too. I think it's, it still remains one of her most um, robust and layered musical offerings to this day. It also remains one of her most controversial songs uh, and videos. If you know anything about the history uh, behind the song, uh, the Vatican condemned the video and she had a Pepsi endorsement or something. I think that was pulled because of how risky uh, the, the and um, sort of raw the, the video was. And if you know anything about Madonna, you know, she she was not afraid of pushing some envelopes. So oddly, in the context of Deadpool and Wolverine, the song fits. Deadpool as a character, particularly in the cinematic run that we've seen from Ryan Reynolds with the first two movies and, and this current one that's out now, Deadpool is a character that pushes the envelope, is not afraid to push boundaries and comment on a lot of things that uh, most places don't have the ability or just wouldn't dare to to touch on. And I think for Ryan Reynolds, I don't know how much say he had in the choosing of this song in the movie, but something about it feels oddly correct. If you've been following the discourse at all in the last six years, probably before that, between Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, you've seen hints, references to the, to them working together, uh, like jokes. Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds practically begged Hugh Jackman to come out of retirement and begged the universe, the forces that be, to, uh, to, to make a pairing happen between the two of them. And so, like a prayer being answered, this movie, Deadpool and Wolverine, has been gifted has been allowed that Ryan Reynolds has been allowed the room to to make this movie, been a part of the, the making of the movie, and has allowed the fans to see a, a pairing that has been in the ether for some time. So, with that, let's begin the discussion about this current Deadpool threequel, Deadpool Wolverine. Let's do it. Before we get into uh, get into the actual movie, I want to go back to like a prayer for a second and talk about uh, the song in the context of the movie. So, if you know the marketing, if you've seen the trailers at all, you know the song is featured heavily in uh, the marketing. It also features in a what I think is probably the centerpiece action sequence of the film, and it's used to great effect. It's genius and it's great. However. There's something there's something about movies and how they use popular tracks. There is a cinematic musical backing that you hear in the movie to those because because if you most times they use songs you know you know really well. And um, a, a case in point, a good example is uh, Logan. Oddly, we're talking about Logan <laughs> because of how it, it you know that it connects in some odd way to this movie because you know Wolverine is in this movie, but Logan. The trailers for Logan had heavily, they featured the Johnny Cash version of the song Hurt. And if you remember, first of all, that's a great trailer. Uh, it's a work of art on its own. And it perfectly complements the themes of that movie, which is also an amazing movie. If you haven't seen Logan, watch Logan. 
because it's awesome. But Hurt is used in the trailer. And that version of the song is probably the only place you can find it in the trailer. And what I mean by that is it's Johnny Cash's vocals. It's the music from Johnny Cash's, the recording that Johnny Cash was a part of. But also, because it's a movie, trailers and, and a trailer, whatever it is, there's like movie music elements that give the song a, a, another kind of edge for Logan as a character because it's an action. Th- th- this is a more contemplative movie, but there are action beats that the trailer uh, enhances. You hear like drumming and really like epic sounding backing aspects to that song that are obviously not in Johnny Cash's <laughs> version. And that's what I'm talking about with Like a Prayer. Like a Prayer does similar things musically. So you'll hear the song and then you'll also hear cinematic strings or bass elements that are obviously not in Madonna's original version, but they're there for this specifically for this movie and enhance the action scene or something in, in some way. My one complaint about how the song is used well, it's not how the song is used. It's uh, it's actually the the ex the execution of of the song. So hearing the song, there's a term I can't remember from my music classes. There's a, there's a there's a term that explains what it is when you, as the listener, can feel where the music is going. You can feel where certain notes are leaning towards. So you can almost you can almost guess what the next notes are going to be as you're listening to a piece, even if you've never heard it before. There's a term for it and I can't think of it right now, but I remember when I as watching the sequence in this movie, it comes in great, it's fantastic. When it hits the chorus, it's fantastic, but the, you're listening to the the what I'm what I was hearing also was the 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 instrumental backing that specifically created for this movie that were that was there. And I think what disappointed me about that is that some of the minor chords, the minor notes weren't, they weren't leaning the way my instinct was leaning for where I thought the notes would go, but they work. It works. It's not, it's again, it's not a big, it's not a dig on the movie. It's a dig on that aspect of the movie that I would have wished that the notes were, would have met my instinct. I, I don't know how to, to properly uh, describe that but I was leaning somewhere in some certain parts where and it didn't give me that so I was a little bit bothered by that I was like oh man it's such a great use of the song and you guys didn't do what I was feeling you should do but whatever it's whatever it works so anyway the movie let's talk about this movie fans of the first two movies were obviously expecting a third movie and there had been conversations in the interim between Deadpool 2 and this movie uh, about the possibility of of Hugh Jackman returning as Wolverine for this movie, and what a great third movie that could be. So, fast forward to now, this movie is here, and ultimately, if you're a fan of the first two movies, I think generally speaking, you will enjoy this movie. Most people are going to be super thrilled and entertained by this movie. When I left the theater, I originally had a feel, I said, oh, it's uh, it's as good as the first two movies. But then the more I sat with it and the more I thought about it, I realized I had more issues than I did with the first two movies. And that knocked the movie down a couple notches for me in that it's still a good movie. I, I don't think it's as good as the first two movies. And certainly not as good as that original. The first movie, the first Deadpool movie is so special. I don't know that anything after that can can really m- match the level of specialness that that movie brings. It was such a raw, bold movie <laughs> for a superhero property. And oddly, per- it was the per- it, it was perfect. It was exactly, if you know anything about Deadpool from the comics, or you know anything about that character, it was perfect and it was correct it was this this, this perfectly done tightly wound um, and tightly executed very well acted well written and ryan reynolds was perfect 
I thought he was good in X Men Origins too, regardless of how how poor that movie performed. Ryan Reynolds was perfect as Wade Wilson, and I'm glad that he had the opportunity to come back to bring the character to life properly, and it was it was corrective to what was done for his, to his character in X Men Origins, and and so it was perfect. When you compare that to this movie, I don't know that it's as it's it's it has some risk. It's risky. And it is bold still. It maintains the spirit of the first two movies. Although I don't know that it reaches the same the same heights. At the end of the day, the plot is is thin. And I think on one hand, if you care about that kind of thing for a movie like this, then you might be disappointed. But you might not because I think what most people are going to come to the table for is the pairing of Deadpool and Wolverine. You could actually put them in any scenario and I think that's what people are going to come to see regardless of what's happening. And um, I think if you go in with that, you will enjoy the pairing. I, I was hearing somewhere, and I, I hadn't thought about this until I heard this, was around um, about the movie, which was about this, essentially, this movie is essentially a body cop movie. And when I thought about it, I, w- I thought, oh, that's, of course, it's the, and this is, this is, I've said this before in other videos about how superhero movies are going to continue to thrive. Lately, you know, they, there's been, uh, you know, a dip in appreciation and dip in quality in some of these movies. And I think how they find new areas to, to, to thrive and new areas to continue to have a life and live is by drawing from other genres and other types of stories. You can no longer, I think, tell a straight superhero story without, and just having it be that. You the, Now it feels like it only adds more juice to the, to, the, to the story if you have other elements. So for instance, we're talk, you talk about Captain America and the Winter Soldier, for instance, that is a political thriller. And you get the guy who was like the political thriller guy, Robert Redford, who used to, he was in a slew of those movies in the 1970s from uh, All the President's Men and like Operation of the Condor or whatever. I think the, 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 there's, there's a slew of 70s movies where there's mistrust in, in, in the political arena. And The Winter Soldier is a modern version of that movie. It's a superhero movie, but it has a huge thread of pol- political intrigue and political mistrust. And though that's the, that's, that's part of what made that movie so great. Never mind the action movie. The action choreography is fantastic in that movie. It's just a very well, well-made movie. <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming. It's like uh, a John Hughes movie. It's a Spider-Man movie, but this is Spider-Man in high school. And you have Ferris Bueller's Day Off. You have elements of, these eighties frivolous movies that makes it work. It's another layer that makes it work. It was going to work anyway because it's Spider-Man, but you add that other layer and it's great. And I think the same is true in this movie. Yes. You have superhero characters and stuff, but I think by putting these two characters who are, could be more different in the same sandbox and see how they play off each other. It's Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. It's like it's a it's a version of some of the great pairings in cinematic history where you have these two people 48 hours and another 48 hours and <laughs> it's rush hour. It's you know if you just take that it's it's heck it's even you know there's elements of lethal weapon in that in in, in that in the ways that you're dealing with two opposing people who have to be dealing with each other. They don't get along at first and they have to work they have to figure out how to work together. At the heart of this picture, that's what Deadpool and Wolverine is. And so if you like those movies, those kinds of movies, I think you you might find something to appreciate about this movie because it has those elements just with some superhero flair, some superpowers and some fantastic grand epic action sequences and crazy visual effects. And so, yeah, it's like, you know, you put Steve Martin and John Candy in a movie where all these, the world is ending around them and then just see what happens. It's, It's that kind of thing. I think for people who appreciate those types of movies, you'll, you'll like that. Where you might have a problem is how the film tackles 
I think the biggest thing was how the film tackles uh, the character of Logan and how does it address the, the legacy of the character and how does it handle, how does it interact with Hugh Jackman's last appearance as Logan in the film, Logan? And are you okay with how the movie handles that? I think that's ultimately the, that's the question. Now, because it's Deadpool, I don't think you're going to get out of it. You won't get around not addressing that movie. 2017 um, final outing, or it was the final outing for Hugh Jackman as, as the character. We have to address it in some way. And so in true Deadpool fashion, the movie does this. Depending on who you are, you may or may not be okay with that. Now, personally, I I went with it, but I, 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 a part of me felt like the 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 majesty of of the send off of, of of Logan in that movie was kind of tampered with. I think <laughs> I, I feel like a line was crossed a little bit. Like I don't. <laughs> this is my this is my personal feeling feeling on it. Uh, um, you may disagree, and I think that's great. That's okay if you do. Um, and I think on one hand, part of this is me having to figure out a way to accept that because it's a Deadpool movie, there's not going to be, a, like, you know, almost nothing is off limits. He's got he's, he's to cross some lines. I remember I talked about at the start of this video, he's a character that's all about risk and all about pushing the envelope, all about pushing, all about pushing boundaries. And all three movies have elements of this where the character – pushes things pretty far and it's great for humor it, it does it, it does it's great for some it makes for some charged uh sequences and stuff and i think this movie is no different however i was really skeptical about this movie in the first place about having wolverine it's like how are you, how are you gonna have wolverine it, it was such a perfect send-off logan was so perfect i think it's one of the it's i think it's it's easily one of the best superhero films ever made it's one of the best it's, it's 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 up there for sure and again that's another one that draws heavily from other types of films it's a superhero film but it's a western it's a it's a neo-western and so that is the that's how these movies are going to continue to live drawing from other elements that movie was so good why are you i would almost have preferred if this movie did not address logan at all just have have Everything else happened except the direct addressing <laughs> of um, of Logan from the 2017 film. So that that's probably my biggest problem with the movie. Like again, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. I, I really, I, you know, I I laughed a little bit. I you know, I I was amused. But that was really like, oh, that that was a line that I feel like uh, I would have read. I would have. I could have done without lines being crossed in that era. The other thing is because Deadpool as a character is so self-referential and there's going to be references to everything under the sun almost, even to the people who are in like real life people playing the actors who play the characters, that's Deadpool. Like that's who the character is. I would have also not, I, you know, there's certain jokes that reference the if you if you catch it if you if you're thinking about it if you if you're aware of it you could you you could read into that or you could read not read into some of those jokes but some of them felt almost too personal like they felt like there were digs at the actors and things that were going on in the actors personal lives that also I could have done without that just felt like oh man. and I, maybe that's just me I'm sensitive about certain <laughs> stuff like that but that doesn't mean I don't have a sense of humor I could I could, I, I I laughed at it but I was like oh that's it felt like a roast <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you watch some of these roasts and some of the roasts sometimes can, you know, if there's no boundaries set, that the roasts can kind of go off the rails and you can really start hitting people uh, below the belt. Uh, sorry to say that I think there's some elements where, not a lot, but I think there's probably a couple elements, two, three elements of this film that feels like it's below the belt, even for Deadpool uh, in this, in this, <laughs> in, in this fear. Having said that, there were other things that felt, that they were kind of light. Like I felt like it, when you compare this movie to the first two, there's so much happening. There's so much being thrown at you that you don't really catch the fact that 
certain things might have felt glossed over or or not addressed enough, didn't get the same sharp dig like other elements did. And I think uh, it's, yeah, it's something. Something about it felt a little bit watered down. And some of that has to do with, I think, personally, you know, because Disney purchased Fox, like many of you know, and which owned, which was had the rights to a character like Deadpool, Mutants, the X Men, uh, Fantastic Four, all of those those types of those characters. That the question for me was around like, will, will Disney allow Fox to, or Marvel? Because now that you know, will Disney allow the people behind the making of this movie to just make their movie, to make it like they would have made it if Disney hadn't bought Fox? And having seen the movie, I don't. I think mostly that the answer is yes. I can't quite put my finger on all the elements that that make me question it, but I, but I do feel like there are some parts where there were some other barriers added that prevented the filmmakers from being fully free to make the movie that felt more in line with the first two Deadpool films. Having said that, it does. It's a worthy addition to, to the Deadpool movies, and it does feel like it fits in the family of those movies. It's not a wildly, which is what I was worried about. I said, dang, Disney bought Fox. This movie is going to be watered down. It's not going to be rated R. They're going to be light on the action or light on the sort of violence, and that's whack. But I think they they hit all the beats to make you feel like, okay, this is still part of the the series, and it feels like Deadpool but there's some more under the surface things that make you question whether or not the filmmakers had the full and total control uh, to make this movie. But um, going back to the action, mostly the action is great in this movie is solid. However, I will say there were sequences that felt too shaky cam. Like you couldn't always make out and spatially what was happening. You could, but it was just so, shaky there were i think yeah i think there were there were two extended action sequences where it felt like that and that that bothered me a little bit but the third act action sequence uh is solid i think the last really really well done it was it's stage from like the side, like almost like a video game, and you just watch the action happen linearly, and it's it's well choreographed, well staged. It's very good, and of course you got Madonna like a prayer, and it's playing, and it's great. So it's <laughs> it works. It's probably, I think, my favorite part of the action beats of the film. In terms of the quieter moments, there are some really good quiet moments that really work. Hugh Jackman obviously is fantastic. He continues to bring gravitas and truth to his portrayal of Logan. And it's just great to see. It makes you emote, it makes you feel something. And I just, these movies are always surprising because it's so hyper violent and so tons of jokes, off, off the wall jokes, uh, lots of references to like sexual things and all kinds of it's just it's wild it, it like in every sense of the world it's actually really wild so when you have moments of intimacy that really ground you i think you're more likely to to stick with a story that does that earnestly and actually feels right uh, downright wholesome actually in, in a movie uh like this with such crazy stuff going on <laughs> And I think the same is true in this movie. That that holds true. Hugh Jackman will anchor the heck out of this movie, and and for that matter, you know Ryan Reynolds, like he's like he's always had he's had moments in each of these movies where he's got to do some genuine where it's not all jokes and quips. There's moments of of real, real acting and and truth. And I think the two of them sharing the screen and actually having moments like that really make this film in a lot of ways, more emotional than the first two films uh, in, uh, in a lot of ways, not, not every way. I feel like, I st- you know, I still feel like depending on where you fall on the, the spectrum of your appreciation of the Deadpool movies, 
as a unit, as like a trilogy or whatever it is, uh, you could find yourself leaning towards the first Deadpool uh, or leaning towards this movie. The second movie has some stuff too, but some of it, some of the stuff felt mixed up with a lot of the the plot stuff. But there is some genuine sincerity, and this movie has that too. But you have an extra layer because you now have Hugh Jackman as like the co lead, the co main character in this movie. So you have double the emotion, double the double the sincerity, and the movie's better for it. So whatever the other complaints are the emotionality and really this is this this is a movie about them about their love story oddly their their journey <laughs> as 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 two people who start out at, at odds and then find their way together and then are able to uh continue through their journey and it's great it's actually so it's great in that way ultimately the verdict is this movie is 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 good if you excited about it all this is probably the probably the biggest movie of the summer. I don't know that any other movie is going to be more anticipated than this one, save for Alien Romulus, maybe. But I think this was probably the, the, the top anticipated movie of the summer. And it's been interesting to be rolling in the summer blockbuster season. I, it's been a while since I've actually been actively seeing them almost every, you know, as they release each week or whatever. And and yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a, an interesting ride this summer. So, uh, as far as this movie is concerned, I I say give it a watch. If if you're a fan of Deadpool, you'll enjoy it. If you uh, are more um, thoughtful, if you think if you you know your mind is more mind is more busy, you might have some more problems. And I think that's sort of where I am. I, I did enjoy the movie, but I have I have a lot of thoughts and things that I probably was not okay with. <laughs> So I'm, you know, more like, okay, it was, it was good. It was, I did like that it continued to take risks. And as a, as a fan of the Deadpool movies, I, I can't be mad at that. So that's going to do it for this review. And if you've stuck around through this, this is a longer uh, one. So thank you for sticking around to, to watch this one. Uh, but come on back. More reviews are on the way. So in the meantime, take it easy, be well, and I'll see you in the next one.